Wednesday morning, and today we are talking about John Patrick's quote book. As John has often said, something along the lines of, if somebody has said it well, you have no excuse for saying it poorly. This is also something that John has given to his children, and he has written in it, and then let them finish and filled it up. I've always liked remembering things that were said well. That's why I like poetry, uh, which most people don't have a taste for these days. But I did start writing them down in a book, and this is the third one. I lost one in the University of Michigan some time ago, and I built one other, and then lost that too. But by the time I lose it, I know most of them anyway. Uh, I gave my children one of these books when they started asking serious questions, uh, which was usually around 11 or 12. And I would fill the first 20 pages of uh, the book with favorite quotations of mine. Uh, this one was given to me by my daughter, who, uh, who uh, shared with me, we both love uh, Gerald Manley Hopkins' poem, As Kingfishers Catch Fire, Dragonflies Draw Flame. Um, so that's the opening page in her quotation book and in mine. Um, uh, but uh, so I, I did that and they all got the habits, uh, especially my son, who's uh, uh, the professor in the family. Uh, he went off and did uh, his undergraduate degree in combined arts and sciences at uh, the University of McMaster where uh, Western civilization was taught by a wonderful Jewish lady. And uh, at the end of the year, she gave him an A plus and said, uh, Jonathan, I will miss your essays next year. Uh, you always seem to have bigger questions on your mind than I do. And his comment was, well, every essay title she gave us, I already had in my book, two or three. And he's got two of these books that he knows by heart. Uh, Two or three great Christian writers had already sketched out the essence of the problem and the Christian solution to it. So I was flying. Um, no other student had that. Let me give you an example. I have to have a, uh, a look on which page it is to uh, be able to get it right for you. Uh, here's a, a very famous one. Uh, and I will read it to you, and while I'm reading it to you, I would like you to be thinking, when was this written? And uh, I will be surprised if you get it right. Christianity, and that is its greatest merit, has somewhat attenuated that brutal German love of war, but could not destroy it. Should that subduing talisman, the cross, be shattered, the frenzied madness of the ancient warriors, that insane berserker rage of which the Nordic poets and bards have sung so often, will once more burst into flame. This talisman, the cross, is fragile, and the day will come when it will collapse miserably. The ancient stony gods will rise from the debris and rub the dust of a thousand years from their eyes, and Thor, with his giant hammer, will smash the Gothic cathedrals. Do not smile at the advice of a dreamer who warns you against Kant and Fichte and the philosophers of nature. Do not smile at the visionary who anticipates the same revolution in the realm of the visible that has already taken place in the spiritual. Thought precedes action as lightning precedes thunder. German thunder is of true Germanic character. It is not very nimble, but rumbles along ponderously. Yet it will come, and when you hear a crashing such as never before been heard in the world's history, then you will know that the German thunderbolt has fallen at last. A play will be played out in Germany, which will make the French Revolution look like an innocent idol. Well, you would all, all agree that that's a pretty good description poetically of, of the Second World War. But it was written in 1834 by a Jewish guy, Henrik Heine, 
That's a prophecy from a secularist who understood. The best secularists do understand. So anyone who says to you, prophesy never happens, show him that. You wouldn't accept Isaiah 53 as prophecy, although how they can afford, avoid that, I don't know. But great statements made by people who don't believe but have got it right are the best. Thank you, Dr. John. Thank you guys for listening. Again, if you have questions, reach out to us. Let us know you want to hear, and hopefully you guys are being helped by this daily podcast. With that being said, we'll see you guys all next week. Thank you.